So Charles, we're delighted to have you here at Collector Mania today. Of course, everyone's excited, as always, about Game of Thrones. Have you found shooting season three compared to previous seasons? Uh, well, we shot it last year, so it's a, it's a while ago now. I'm kind of gearing myself up for season four. Um, but the whole thing is, one, it's really well written, and, and then it's, it's organized like a military operation. It's incredibly well organized. And it's a joy to do. It's great. It's terrific. Now, there's been a lot of discussion among our viewers since we last spoke to you about Game of Thrones, and they were kind of wondering whether Tywin is actually evil or is he just doing what he has to do on Game of Thrones? What's your take on that? Tywin is just doing what he has to do. It's a feudal society that he lives in, and he has to retain his position, and um, he can only do that from being strong and ruthless, I'm afraid. You've got a great sparring partner, a great verbal sparring partner this season in Diana Riggs' character, Oleno. What's it been like welcoming her to the cast, and do you think she's a match for Tywin? She's trying to be. Um, no, I've, I've known Diana for a long time, and um, she's the kind of female version of Tywin Lannister. Um, but she's, she ain't going to get the better of me. <laughs> No, she's trying though, isn't she? She is. <laughs> now, Tywin, of course, is very clever, but it was interesting to see him being outfoxed by a child in a way, because Aya was right under his nose all the time, wasn't he? Now, what do you make of that? She's... Um, the character is very, very clever. She's kind of streetwise, is that girl. And Maisie, who plays her, is just a complete joy to work with. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were times when, you know, she was kind of, she was wrong footing Tywin, but I think she commanded his respect because of that. Do you think he would have worked out who she was maybe if he hadn't have been occupied by other things like thinking someone was out to try and kill him? Yeah, given a bit more time and circumstance, he would have probably worked out or he would, have, he would have put people on the ground to find out. There was an interesting conversation you had with Cersei, telling her that um, you didn't mistrust her because she was a woman, but more like because she wasn't as clever as she thinks she is. Now, that got me thinking, if she's not as clever as she thinks she is, is Tyrion as clever as he thinks he is? And is Tywin as clever as he thinks he is? Tywin is as clever as he thinks he is, yes. Um, and, uh, and so is Tyrion. And the problem <coughs> um, with Tywin and Tyrion, one, is that he's not perfect, you know, and um, if he'd had his way, he would have just let him float out to sea when he was born. But also, you know, he knows that, that Tyrion is what he lacks in physical stature. He more than makes up for in intellect. Um, and Tywin is well aware of that. Who do you think is better at the Game of Thrones? Do you think Tywin or Tyrion is better? Tywin, because he's in a, he's in a more privileged position. If Tyrion had more going for him, he would be just as good as Tywin. As someone who isn't as good as either of them is definitely Joffrey, I think, don't you? No. <laughs> yes. Now, Joffrey, we've seen some very interesting scenes with you this season. One of them we saw with um, Cersei and you were she was saying, oh, you try and control him, and you were, I will, thank you very much. Now, do you think that Tywin and Marjorie Tyrell, who seems to have been doing a, quite a good job of controlling Joffrey so far, are the only people capable of controlling him in Game of Thrones? At the moment, that's how it would appear, yes, yeah. Do you think there's anybody who might be coming up who might be a match for him? He seems to be worried about Daenerys, wasn't he? He was asking you about Danny and her dragons. Yeah. Um, I think if and when those two meet, if he's still alive, um, he'd better be very, very careful because she's a very powerful woman. Yeah. What's it like working with Peter Dinklage? He's so fantastic as Tyrion. And also Jack Gleeson, who does a superb job making Joffrey such a nasty piece of work. Yeah, I mean, Jack is actually a very, very sweet boy and very bright, very intelligent young man um, with a lot of natural talent. He's terrific. 
Peter is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, he's a supremely gifted actor and very, very smart. And he's a joy to spend time with. I'm very, very fond of Peter. He's a great guy. I've heard that you are apologising to him sometimes for the kind of things you have to do on set. Yeah, I spend a lot of time apologising to Peter because I treat him like shit. <laughs> Talking about shit, there was a great scene where Tywin comes in to the throne room towards the end of season two, and he, on, on a horse, who else could do that but him? And of course his horse <laughs> shits on the floor of the, of yeah. the throne room before he comes in. Could anyone else get away with it? No, that was, uh, that was great. I mean, it's wonderful, isn't it? You know, um, that was a terrific scene to shoot because, you know, I'm an actor and we love showing off and to actually ride into a room full of people on the back of a horse is quite something. It must be. Yeah. I mean, how was it? How, does, how did the horses respond? Are they all very well behaved as well? We have great horses working on this and they, well, they, they come from an organisation called the Devil's Horsemen who provide horses for the film industry. And um, they're very well-schooled, well-behaved horses. And um, they know the business, you know, they hear action and they know that that's when they start work and uh, they get used to hitting a mark. And then after a while they get bored, you know. Then you really have to keep them in line, but they're, they're terrific animals to work with. What would you like to say to fans of Game of Thrones who are watching this interview? Thank you for watching Game of Thrones as much as you have. Please continue to watch Game of Thrones because it gets better and better and better and better. And um, we're now in May and we start shooting season four at the beginning of July. Um, and it'll probably appear April of next year. So um, be prepared for that because it's going to be really, really good.